gentlemen, Harmontown is now in session. How do you feel? If you're at home right now, pull your pants down. Please welcome to the stage, Dungeon Master, Game Master Extraordinaire, Spencer Crittenden! Yes! Here we are together, just us. And it wouldn't be just us unless we welcomed out the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon! Yes! I am Brandon Johnson. Thank I'll be you. sitting in for Jeff Davis. We love you, Jeff Davis. Thank you. Thank you, uh, guest comptroller Brandon Johnson. Thank you. He just said it. He said it. <laughs> uh... I think I'm just gonna get right into it. I don't really have a, uh, I, don't, I don't think I have, I've been purposely avoiding current events. I, I don't think that's why anyone listens to this show. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 the, cur the cur you, 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 you tune in to hear about me. Uh, <laughs> I forget about this Russia investigation. How's, how's Dan taking it? Right, <laughs> right. And so it's, it's like the only news on that front is that Dan is trying to, Dan is experimenting with ignoring it. Um, <laughs> and, and, and Dan understands that that is a, a full on coward move. Like I, 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 there's nothing that you can say to me, I don't think that I would, that would like make me go, now wait a minute, like, like about what I am right now. Like I am a fragile white, like closet libertarian, I think maybe I, I, I like 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 I don't know what whatever I was, but for, like like I'm a coastal elite that like just wants his Obama back, uh, or any mannequin dressed like Obama that wants to just carry on the fucking status quo, drone strikes on Benghazi, whatever the fuck was the problem before. I don't care, just get, get it back up and running. Uh, <laughs> I do not want Nazis in Atwater. Like, I don't, wanna, I, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want one of the five places that I used to go drink when the other four places were shitty. Uh, to, to, I always had a weird vibe about that place. Um, <laughs> I always thought I could smell a little Nazi on that place. Uh, <laughs> Uh, did you see the fa in case of LA people were talking about a local bar? Did you happen to? Did you, you know what I'm talking about? Fuck you! Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> did you happen? I just care. This is just like this is not politics. By the way, none of this is fucking politics. It's a fascist coup. Whatever. But <laughs> like an asteroid coming at the Earth uh, isn't politics just because Republicans want to say it's not coming at the Earth. Like, like that right. doesn't make it politics. It's a, I don't give a fuck about the Republicans and Democrats. I'm like scared of asteroids. Um, and there's an asteroid called fascism, and a lot of my friends that I talk to, they go like, uh, it, you know, I think it'll swing, and it always swings, and I go, I know it always swings. We're always addicted to it. We're addicted to the swing. We love the swing. We love the four years of this, and the eight years of that, and the eight years, and the four years, and the four years. The, this, the swing that we're on right now is a 30-year swing. It's yeah. a big old swing, and it, the front porch is called the end of a country. Like, it's, <laughs> it takes 30 years to swing back like and yeah. it's gonna swing back to some horrible form of probably militant socialism when it does swing back we're fucked no matter what okay so that's the end of my politics corner um uh and uh uh, uh what, what the fuck was i uh oh oh just in the so in the culture realm I just found it interesting. Did you see the apology for the, the owner? I did. Of that place? And this is a very, it's, it's, this is just, this is not politics. This is just, you know, as you guys know, I teach a master class in apologies. Like, I, I like apologies are, like, I missed it. They're very telling. Like, Sorry. the guy's apology was essentially, hey, I'm Jewish. My bouncers are gay and black, and they love these guys. And I didn't know they were Nazis because I didn't see no uniforms. Right. It was more of an, it was just sort of a... It was really I, defensive. I would summarize his apology as this. He was saying, look, I'm a businessman. Um, I'm, I don't know for sure that I can close the financial gap between a fascist's are welcome here bar and a fascist only bar. I'm going to need a couple more months. So please keep having your liberal rap parties here. 
Because I need until like, I think 2019. I think by then, then I can just say fascist only and then like, <laughs> it'll be fine. They did need a little convincing to start throwing those people out. That is the truth. They, they said that uh, the only color we see is green. Yeah. Which well, is my favorite answer to any sort of racist question. <laughs> like, oh, they're beating black people in the streets. Hey man, Kermit the Frog, motherfucker Kermit the Frog. Yeah. <laughs> Plant life, bro. Plant life, green, that's all we see. All right. So it's crazy that it's like literally now right behind your house. Right. Well, you made fun of me last time, what, two years ago when Kumail had his story that happened in Silver Lake. And I was like, this happened in Silver Lake. And you're like, Silver Lake. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mean, it, way to rub my oppression in my face, Dan. It, it, <laughs> it may as well be happening in our basements. I mean, I don't even, it's not even like, oh shit, it's at, at water. It's but like, it does, it does sort of signify a little bit of a shift that it's now in places where you thought there were going to be hip white people sort of helping you out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or, 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 or gay black bouncers, be fair. Or, well, you know, the bouncer is black and the other one is gay. He merged the two to have a super bouncer. <laughs> um, so yeah, it does mean a little something when you hear it like, oh shit, it's going down in like, Los Feliz. <laughs> Cause you getting chased out of little doms and shit is when it's gonna get like pretty critical. <laughs> I gotta say, I do, li I do like the, the, the forced kind of survival behavior of some of these groups where the, these groups are almost in a mocking or like psyops way. They're like, hey, look, we're, if, we were, if we were racist, we wouldn't have this guy or this guy. Because it actually does, for I, do th I see a million flaws in the mirror when, we, when we're like, like ha ha hating some of these guys is making, it, you know, hopefully the positive side, it's like, oh, what, what do you hate and why? And the answer is nationalism, the answer is all these, you know, ideology, let's not be fooled by, like, you know, let's not be too, so fashionable that we're blinded by this shit. That's kind of, that's where, yeah. that's where trolling helps. It's like this bleach you scatter across things and like, it kind of, like, it's corrosive, but it kind of like also gets some shit off the counter, you know? It's yeah. like, let's talk about good versus bad. Let's not talk about fucking like, how you, yeah, like, like you, you can tell how liberal you are by how many black people are in your club. <laughs> yeah. um, but you, right. can't, it, you can, though, it is a good indicator. <laughs> And I'm doing pretty good. As long as, <laughs> as, long as, Jeff, uh, as, long as Jeff keeps getting sick, man. <laughs> this is the most liberal podcast in town. We, we want to invite you, but you ate too many lemon bars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so I have, a, I, have, I have a special story. That's enough of that. Uh, uh, I, I know 30% I know of my fans are Nazis, and that's why there's probably... There's empty, there's empty seats here now. The show is failing. <laughs> it's 30%. No, 30% of the seats are empty. Yeah, not, I mean, not 30. Right, guys? All right, Jesus. Well, you can't believe them. Those are full seats. They're biased. They're like, whoa. <laughs> they start, whoa. Hey, hey, empty seats. <laughs> what, are, are you not here? What? Well, <laughs> so weird. Uh, well, are you dead? So here's, <laughs> so here's, a, here's, a, here's a story I, I have to sit down for. Oh, it's, uh, shit. A sit-down story, Dan? Oh, shit. And a hard sit down. Okay, get your mic. Okay. Get All it right. to the mind. All right. Okay. All right. Papa Bear is going to tell you a story. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Where is the... Okay. So, uh, thir the story starts on Thursday when I get a text message from Dad uh, on my phone. And it's very, it's very nice. Uh, Thursday, 12.28 p.m. As your father, I wanted to text you to tell you how proud of you I am for your Emmy nomination for that pickle show you work so hard on. <laughs> uh, and as a good son, six hours later, I text, uh, Dad, thanks, but here's something of even higher value. I got a Tesla, because my dad, I, I'm like, I want to bond with my dad about it. He's a car guy. Because stuff that, you know, it's, a, it's oh my right. God, I'm bonding with my dad. I'm texting you right now while it drives itself. It's, oh, it was Jesus. true, don't judge me. <laughs> also, also the last thing that we ever read. <laughs> and then, so, so this is where my dad starts to really blow my mind. Already, I was like, that was nice, congratulations. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. 
And he said, but then he says, but what about the smudges on the touchscreen? Couldn't you afford the Edison? And I went, holy shit, my dad is making references to my television show, Great Minds with Dan Harmon, which is a really deep cut. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On top of an Edison joke, which you and never And then hear. my dad goes, nothing like self-congratulatory callbacks. I'm like, well, my dad is like so hip. <laughs> Um, so at this point, it's important, the story happens in layers, and it gets a little thick. <laughs> and there's shit to unpack, but the first thing I need to do now is bring up the director of Great Minds with Dan Harmon, Heath Collins. Yay. Yeah, yeah. So before we start to unpack this, Heath, like, I guess the first question is, do you remember when and why I put your number in my phone as dad? Uh. <laughs> he asks everybody. I forgot, for no, sure. No, no, no. I, don't feel bad, because he asks everybody this question. <laughs> How many people? Um, I do, in fact, remember. Um, I wish it were more tawdry than, than, than it actually is. So we, as Dan mentioned, worked on Great Minds together. And uh, it was not the highest of budgeted shows, so we didn't have like VFX for things necessarily, other than the really awesome stuff in the lab that I'm sure you all saw. Um, but we couldn't burn in the image of dad calling on his cell phone, so we had to have, to shoot it, we had to have an actual phone. Probably not this one, because you have a Tesla now, so you've got a newer phone probably The, the, as well. the Ron Funches episode, he plays Idi Amin. And, and his dad uh, had to call. And the way, the resolution to the conflict with Idi Amin, who, like, it turns into a hostage situation, but then, like, my dad calls on the phone, and Idi Amin enjoys talking to him about politics. Um, and, the, and they kind of call, I don't know, they calm each other down until Edie turns into dust. But, uh, so, so, we had to put someone's, we put your phone number in my phone as dad, so that when you called me, it would say, Dad, and then I forgot. <laughs> but it's notable, the impor important thing about the story, the tr <laughs> absolute tragedy of this story, uh, is, that, is that it's not just me thinking that I have a new, wonderful relationship with nope. my dad. Nope, no and it's, it's not. And, and, and Heath is not trying to deceive me. No, I'm not. If you scroll back through this window, there are a half a dozen times At over least. the years where the following conversations happen. It's like, uh, he'll, he'll go, like it'll <laughs> say like, uh, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, con con uh, Thursday, May 10th, uh, 12.42 p.m. He texts, congrats on that ginormous renewal. The, the, as, early, as recently as the 70 episode thing, I remembered, and I, and I, and I say, thanks, Dad. <laughs> you're, st you're still in my phone as Dad. So I, I, re I remember and I know. So he thinks I remember and I know. So, so the really sad part of this, the whole thing that happens that starts on Thursday is that I'm thinking I have a new, like, late life friendship with my dad and he th thinks that Dan Harmon's being really nice to him. Uh, so, now, so now knowing that it's Heath and that Heath doesn't know I don't know it's my dad and that I don't know it's not my dad. Uh, let's start just over again, and you can read your part, and I'll read my part. Perfect. So, and then it, because then it continues until last night. At which point we just, I realized when Cody, I think Cody pointed out, or no, you did. Oh God. And then, and, and then, and then, and then at a certain point, I was like, you have to come on the show, and we have to, we have to share this. This <laughs> is this the out. worst thing that's ever happened <laughs> to, and to two people. Yeah. Like, okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, you want to just start with uh, as your father. As your father? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> Thursday, 12.28 p.m. As your father, I wanted to text you to tell you how proud of you I am for your Emmy, spelled E-M-M-I-E, because -M -M -E, <laughs> I thought that would be more dad-like, for your Emmy nomination for that pickle show you worked so hard on. See, now I get it. You're, you're acting, you're talking like a dad. But you weren't trying to fool me. No. You were doing the same bit that we kept yeah, doing. There's a similitude. I just forgot. I just, I just drank that part of the Rolodex away. <laughs> uh, 
And so I go, Dad, thanks, but here's something of even higher value. I got a Tesla. I'm texting you right now while it drives itself. But what about the smudges on the touch screen? Couldn't you afford the Edison? Nothing like self-congratulatory co congratulatory callback. Self-congratulatory because he knows that it's the director of the show that he's referencing, so he, he's not trying to fool me. I'm, but I'm like, oh my God, I'm telling, I'm texting Cody in the meantime. I'm like, my dad, look who is sending her screen grabs. I'm looking, he's making Great Minds references. Um, oh, this is on some Make-A-Wish shit. So I, I, sent a, I sent a video of the, like, the inside of my Tesla. It was, like, it was a video of, of just the going from the dashboard to the steering wheel because I wanted to show that it was driving itself, but it doesn't, it doesn't look like any, it looks the same as a normal car because you're just shooting from here. You can't tell that it's driving itself. Um, and, and so I just sent an unremarkable video showing that. And I said, I always want to show people a video of me not driving, but the LA cops are too aggressive about pulling over for texting and driving. They're not too aggressive. That's a, I, 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 I support the law <laughs> uh, I, I, about distracted driving. I don't, I, 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 was, I was, you know, but I'm just, I, just, I just meant they're too aggressive for me to get that video in full, you know, like I'd have to do so much that I would be distracted driving. <clears throat> so, then, so, then, so then my dad says, <clears throat> I send a video of me fakely self-driving my Hyundai Elantra uh, on the highway, and it says NBD. I'm like, oh my god, my dad says NBD. <laughs> my Hyundai can do that too, with the video. And then he shows a video, and it's like, the Hyundai dashboard, but then like a crazy cam a ca camera shake and, and the sound of what I thought was my dad doing a crazy character going, oh, God damn it! <laughs> and he was like affecting this fun voice and doing this Sweet comedy voice. bit. And <laughs> Heath just pointed out backstage that had I watched the entire video, which I always stopped, even though I kept showing it to Cody and going, my dad's doing bits. The, it cuts to black because the phone falls down. At, after, after six seconds of which Heath picks up the phone, looks into the lens, <laughs> and goes, uh, uh, whatever, like does some self-effacing bet, which I've never seen. No. And so I could, that, that if, if, if only, if only I had seen, watched the video all the way. Instead, I just text absolutely sincerely, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> So then days go by. So I walk into Little Dom's the other day, last night, uh, well, Saturday night. No, Saturday? Yeah, it says Saturday. Okay, yes, Saturday night. Two days later. I walk into Little Dom's with Cody. Uh, John Hamm is sitting there. I was, I'm just gonna go ahead, oh, who cares, like, whatever. It's, he's, he's sitting there with Edgar Wright and... Uh, and uh, Paint a picture, all of them. Uh, I'm not gonna name everybody. <laughs> Uh, so, was it, uh, but, but like Joaquin Phoenix, and like Cicely, Cicely Tyson. It was a table of stars. Uh, a Batman. <laughs> a per table of stars. Perched in the, in the booth there at the, at the, not the head, it was, just, it was a little booth. And uh, it's, uh, it's very clearly Warren Beatty. Uh, uh, and, uh, and it's like, like, ugh. Uh, like, 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 that's famous even for L.A., like, 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 yeah. like, like crazy famous, like, 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 legendary icon, like, you don't expect to see Warren, you expect to see Quentin Tarantino, like, at a, at a drive through or something, yeah. like, the back of his head, oh, that's Quentin Tarantino, or even, maybe even Harrison Ford, like, like, oh, look, he's jogging, you don't, you just never expect to see Warren Beatty. No. Uh, and, 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 and I saw him and then, we're, but I, you know, I did what you're supposed to do. I ignored him and pretended that he was a ghost and like talked to John Hamm about how's business? Where do you live now? Oh, that's a good neighborhood. <laughs> and then we go over to, uh, the booth and we're, we're like, Cody and I are like, like, wow, that's, that's pretty neat. Like Warren that's the real Beatty, deal. that's a big deal. Like yeah. seeing Warren Beatty, didn't really meet him as such, just was introduced to him, but you know, this is Warren, and then, but, so I met Warren Beatty. Okay. You know, technically. <laughs> and, and 
also like, I don't know what else, what, what more do you need? Like, like, like from that exchange, like, like I, I met Warren Beatty. That's as good. That's that's peak Warren Beatty relationship, right? I met him. I, I mean, I don't. Like, I'm not that's saying there's not more fulfilling things in, in store for you if you are his neighbor. I'm just mean me. Like, what am I going to do with a Warren Beatty friendship? I'm like, this is it. I got to share it with somebody. Right. But who do you share it with? Like, I don't want to come off like a star fucker to my L.A. friends. <laughs> and the truth is, even Cody's a little young to be to understand what a big deal it is to see Warren Beatty in person. <sighs> do I have an older friend who's from out of town? Hmm. Nope. Wait a minute. I, th I think I said it out loud, and Cody was like, well, your dad's been pretty cool lately. <laughs> So now I text my dad, but it's not my dad. I'm texting Heath Collins, the director of Great Minds, yeah. who thinks he's my friend. <laughs> he has good reason to think that I, I would just text him the following. Uh, I just met Warren Beatty at a restaurant! Exclamation point. What? Who are you, 1930s Hollywood royalty? That. If I wasn't playing a dad, I promise I would have come up with something better than that, but I was trying to stay in the voice. Uh, parentheses, in my mind, he's 120 years old. Then I said, was it at Chick-fil-A? I heard he loves waffle fries. <laughs> And then meanwhile, I'm trying to take a picture, like I'm trying to do a selfie thing where, because he's in a booth behind us. I, I didn't want to be like a, I just thought me, you never know if the camera's on top, maybe if I do one of these, maybe, maybe you'll see like the top of Warren Blurs. Beatty's head, like over me and Cody. But it Blurs. ends up just being a nice selfie of me and Cody. And that's fine too. And I, t I, t I send it to my dad and I say, this would have been my attempt at a periscope shot, Adam, but there's no way, so it's just us having met Warren Beatty. I'll tell you what, man, he looks way older than you. Because it's important Clearly to compliment he's your dad. Off. <laughs> and this is where I feel bad, but I'm trying to flatter my dad. I'm, I'm like, he looks like a mummy that went to a barber and said, make my hair look like Warren Beatty. <laughs> Maybe that's why you don't get to meet people. <laughs> I'm really excited that Dan is texting me these on Saturday night, like unsolicited, unannounced. So I keep playing along. So he looks better than I expected. But you see, you're, you're not playing my dad at this point, right? You're just being Heath. Yeah. You think I know you're Heath. Yes. Yeah, okay, all right. But I, I just didn't want to, like, fuck up the, I, you know, I didn't want to fuck up the bit. I thought, well, you were still enjoying that. Okay, so you... But that you knew it was me. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm not going to not yes So you think you. I know that it's you, and, yes. and, and you think that even though I know it's you, I'm, like, doing a bit, I'm still it's, treating you like my dad. I thought you, yeah. Okay. We're and, entertained by it in some And so way. you say... And Cody being there also made me feel that way. Right. Um, Please don't fight, guys. So then you say, no, it's your... Yeah, so I say, so he looks better than I expected, is what right. I ask. And I say, here's the important takeaway. You are like three times sexier than Warren Beatty. <laughs> this is how, look at me. <laughs> this is how cool a son I would be. By the way, if you just, if, like, look how low my bar is for a dad before I open the fucking floodgates. And I'm like your pal. Like, I, I'm giving you, like, inside Hollywood shit. I'm calling you sexier than Warren Beatty. Like, all you got to do is, like, congratulate me on an Emmy nomination. And I will be your son every eight hours via text message. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that, I say, you're three times sexier than Warren Beatty. I say, boy, you two look like you have that post-Beatty glow, though. <laughs> Are you both pregnant now? He's old but virile. <sighs> this is where it gets really sad to me. This yeah, is where... This is, it takes a turn. Because oh, meanwhile, Cody and I are talking... Because we're... <laughs> Because Cody and I are talking the whole time, and the conversation isn't about Warren Beatty. It's, uh, like, it's about how, my dad. I'm like, how So then I text, Cody says you and mom should come out to California, and we could go to Death Valley with Cody's dad. You'd probably like it in the desert. 
I want to let you all know that you are falling for the same shit. <laughs> What do you mean? What are they falling for? They're they're going like, ugh, this is this no, there hurts. Was a, there was a awe, oh, like, oh, he, daddy, oh, <laughs> we all got we all got wrapped up in this shit. It's beautiful, but it's sad. <laughs> but it is beautiful. It's it's sad. And it's sad. <laughs> I mean, the beauty, the only, the beauty is only just go. Inf- it's a sad balloon. Maybe it's inflated by beauty. Like we blow it up with beauty, yeah. but it's a it's a balloon made of sadness. Yeah, we like to call it the old piss stained clown. <laughs> All right, so I invite you and mom out to California, and you say, I'm not sure we can handle the heat. It is a dry heat, though. So now at this point, I'm thinking, am I correct in assuming that maybe you're starting to go, oh shit, does he think? I, I'm like, I want to put on it the dad, faux dadness of it enough that you're like, right. ha ha, fuck you, right. whatever. Dry Nothing. heat, oh, he's really going over the top with this dad but, character. But also, <laughs> At this point, and Emma, my wife, can attest to this, I'm like, oh, he's really, like, playing, we're, like, riffing, and I didn't want to ruin it, but I was also just like, what do I say now? (laughs) But, and here's the sad part from, not this is much sadder, but (laughs) the sad part from my side is, like, I don't want Dan to think now I'm not funny, like, that I can't. Keep like a, it going. Like a dad would think. Yeah. You would want to be cool to your kid. Or also like a son would think to for his it was That's right. This is the whole I'm life. telling you, it was dynamic. It's There's dynamic. A lot of, <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of I, emptiness I, I, here. I'm just swooning. I just I go, it's so dry. <laughs> I'm a bigger pussy about heat than you, and I was fine. It's incredibly quiet and free, and you can do whatever you want. Just a thought. Cody's dad loves the desert, and so Cody kind of grew up going out there with him. It was like her Dells. That's a reference to the Wisconsin Dells, where uh, uh, my family would go when I was a kid. Uh, does the next bit require a little context with the brothel thing because of uh, my knowledge? Or... Yeah, I mean, yeah. it does, because, like, like, Cody's dad... Yeah. You... So... I, yeah. So I know Cody, uh, Cody uh, who you all, I'm assuming, know since you watch the show and know who she is. Uh, she's a great writer, wrote a show that I worked on as well. That's how I met Dan, through directing the show that she wrote. One of the things she told me, her dad is very cool, artistic, and when she was a youth, they would go to the desert. You've learned, heard about that so far. But there was a brothel that he went to with her, and he was, like, friends with some of... I don't know what happened there, but... <laughs> They were friends, and it would seem sweet. And I was like, that's crazy, Cody. And then we would always joke about it, and then Cody and her father recently went on a trip out there, and the brothel has since closed, and he, like, collected a sign from the exterior of it. And it was, like, sweet but funny and and just a cool little side story. So um, I text uh, after he suggests we go out there. It's tempting, and you know how I feel about brothels. Does Cody's dad still know a good spot? I know his favorite spot is closed, but maybe you, he, and I could find a new one together. So then I turn to Cody and go... (laughs) Did you tell my dad about the brothels? And Cody goes, I don't know, I tell everybody. (laughs) So so on we go. uh, and so I go, uh, I, I go, we could start one. I'm going to pitch it to Warren. <laughs> oh, I bet he has some great thoughts on that. He'll class up the joint for sure. And then, hey, Dan, I'm really enjoying our father-son repartee. I just want to make sure you remember this is actually he. <laughs> The, the timestamp on this was 10.52 p.m. on Saturday night. This started at like 8.30 p.m. that night. And so, and so and my next text is at 11.10, so that's 18 minutes later, and I wasn't 
I didn't get anything else done. Like, I just read that and took 18 minutes to respond. Oh my God. Somebody just got dad fished. <laughs> I, you know, I, Did not I wish there was a way to uh, 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 cheer with a rotten tomato. Like, uh, you don't like my Steve Harvey line of jokes? <laughs> <laughs> they come with a briefcase and a peacock. <laughs> You deserve cheer booze for that. Uh... <laughs> uh, anyways, oh my God. And then, oh my God. And then, I just finished explaining this to Cody. So that's what the 18 minutes is. Uh, this is, wow. <laughs> this is really so sad. <laughs> I kept showing messages to Cody and being like, this is so cool, I don't know when my dad got so cool. And Cody was like, I love your dad, I told you he was cool. And I was like, yeah, but he just seems different, like he's funnier now. Oh my God. The darkness of this makes it worth it. I had 12 hours of the nicest, closest, most human relationship I've ever had with my dad. So Cody says you have to come on Harmontown so we can explain this whole story and read these texts and walk through it. Uh, you do understand that I really thought you were my dad the entire time, from all the way back to you congratulating me on the Emmy nom. I thought my dad was revealing he watched Great Minds. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, oh, that's, God damn. that's about it. So many people in the back crying right now. It's okay. It's okay. What though, what did you learn about this moment of love? <laughs> <laughs> that it was fake? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, is there, is there a takeaway from that? There I, is. There is. There is. There How is. fucking good. Okay, so here's well, the... There is because it's like, it's clear, it's like, oh my God, are, are we all, well, forget we, I, use my I statements, I am uh, literally one sentence texted away from, like, re reaching out emotionally to my loved ones. Like, 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 of lowering my guard, of being, you know, like, like, it, 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 we're, we're, it makes you wonder how many, how many sentences are we away from, from just like the floodgates opening with people that don't have, we don't necessarily have a 45 year backstory with, but maybe the, yeah, you know, what if the postman said, or, or what if the postman said, "I'm a post lady"? Uh, what if the, what if, what, what if the, what if the, what if your male person, uh, uh, you know, what, what sentence lies between you and right. and and a friendship with your 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 post deliverer, your your uh, your 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 aunts, your uncles, your neighbors, your 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 intimate others? Like, how many yeah. of us are in relationships where maybe you're in a funk for six months, and like, what 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 could one of you say that would like break the spell it's like and it's it doesn't even have to be it's a text yeah what's great is uh there were excuse me for this but you were super brave once somebody leaned out to you reached out to you you became a whole different motherfucker you got super brave you started sharing you did all these things hey, brave is it, bra is it is it is it brave to fawn and, and be like brave. hey uh, it's brave to reach out to somebody who might smack your hands and remind you of why you don't. I don't think my that. dad. To be clear, I don't think my dad would. Uh, in case this. You is, gonna take this bravery. <laughs> but I don't think. I mean, I think. That's I think why people. That's why you don't meet nobody. With my family, to be clear, and I think this is a. This is an important point to make. Like, it, 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 you know, the. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a glass? Do you want to? Like, Get, can somebody get a Heath a, a Steve glass? Steve will probably get a cup. There's a, there's a coffee mug that says world's greatest uh, director. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were saying, to be clear, with your family there is... It's, it's, there, there's not... It's, it, 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 Steve Levy, ladies and gentlemen. The, and I think... 
I don't think there's a lot of like harm that could come of a tentacle reaching out, you know? Like, like you uh, said tentacle it's, though. It's it's not like. <laughs> It, 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 like, it, there's, a, there's a wall between, that, that exists between that happening in real life between me and my dad that's like doesn't make really any sense. That's why, as you can see, as soon as it was perforated, I never, and, and in spite of all of the signs that should have, if I, if I thought I was like such an expert on why I don't like regularly text my dad, I love you, or something like that, like, if I, like why don't I recognize, why can't I tell him from a friend? The, you, the answer is because, because, I, because I like him. Right. Love him, whatever you call it. Well, but, uh, <laughs> but, but like, my family doesn't, you know, it's like there's, there's a lot of, like, it's just, it's just you know, it's, uh, like a lot of people can relate to this. It's like there's families that are like, they're like, they, they're proactive about like, you know, this is how I feel about you and I love you and I'm proud of you or whatever. And then there's families that are like, you know, they throw shoes at each other and all this stuff and like, and then there's, you know, and then there's a probably a good 70% of us that are like somewhere in the middle where we're yeah. kind of like, ah, strained and like, you don't, I don't know. Ah. Yeah, but in this situation, when it was presented to you, you made the choice to be fucking uh, a bigger, better person than you might normally walk around as. That's little... the only thing that I want to, I get, I get in this argument with my therapist all the time, so maybe I'm doing this <laughs> thing that she yells at me about, which is like, I, I, but I don't really think I deserve any Accolades for my behavior, I, I, because I wasn't really risking anything. In my opinion, maybe you're seeing that differently. That's interesting. I didn't think about it that way. I was just—I I think of myself as being the selfish one too. Like it's a two-way street. My not, you know, I don't like. I could text my dad anytime I wanted. And go. I, I do it once a year, maybe like Father's Day. So should we know? give you the old challenge to say that you should text your dad about the Emmy, just to see what this conversation would really look like? I text him. Text. T text my dad that I got. I think he'd be more impressed with the Tesla, you know? Like, okay, uh, either, either one, either one. And we also witnessed somebody fucking being super generous. Oh, you generous. want me to do it now? Is it, yeah. You do it right now! Okay. Everybody, get out your phones and call someone you love right now. <laughs> I'm also gonna need a dollar on each one of those phone calls. Hi, right. my neighborhood's right. overrun by racism, I just. <laughs> I also want to say that we got to see somebody be so generous and just keep up a super loving act. <laughs> Which is like, I don't know why this dude asked me to rub his back, but I'll rub his back. <laughs> it's kind of the coolest fucking thing in the world. <laughs> well, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear. I was waiting for Heath to look at his phone and notice that. Oh, I, Jesus. I, was, I, wanted to, I wanted to do the bit. And he was like, no, you just did it again. <laughs> Yeah, all right, all right. Oh, it didn't go, it didn't go through. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no service here. Heath, was anybody on your end watching as well? My, my wife. Okay, uh, okay. Who, Did she give you tips at all? Uh, what was that? Did she give you tips at oh, all? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's funnier than I am. So she, I run them by. I run a lot of them by. Um, no, she was, she was the one that finally was like, are you sure that he doesn't think that you're his dad right now? <laughs> And I really didn't want to believe that was true. But then, you know, but you still... I just wanted him to think that he, that he and Cody were shooting the shit and getting drunk, and we're like, we should text Heath a joke. That'd be fun. <laughs> it's like, like I'm, only, do, I'm only doing this to yes and the suggestion. I think it's kind of a douchey thing to text your dad that you got nominated for an Emmy. I, 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 I find that okay, to be but not he, like... Here's the thing. Last week you said, I'm happy. Right. Right? So like there's steps to being happy. Right. And one of the fucking steps is to celebrate the good shit. And by earn, you know by I mean? bragging to your dad about your dad, your... it's not bragging when it's to your parents. They're proud of you for fucking wiping your own ass one day. They're like, That's I did that. I won that Emmy. <laughs> 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 like I made that. <laughs> I mean, I want to say that it's, it's not, that's not how my family works. But I believe it, like, sure. But then you'd say, well, this is the problem, is you thinking that... I'm not going to judge you. You can do whatever you want to do. Really. I mean, I, don't, you think that, don't you think it would be better to say, like, how's your boat? Go get that Like, to shit. ask him something, like... Go get that thing you wanted. I don't want, I don't want nothing. I don't yeah, want nothing. Do. 
go get that. Okay, I got busted kind of wanting something <laughs> during this story, didn't I? So that's the key. If you're 45 years old and your weekend can be eclipsed and derailed by an accidental radar ping that makes you think your dad loves you for a second, then, th th then you don't have a right to be like, I don't need nothing from nobody. <laughs> You should, you should, you should, you should reach out to your dad, and, and 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 since you're clearly still in childhood with that relationship, you may as well say, "I made a poo poo in the Emmy potty." Okay. All right. Now I see the logic of it. Okay. My show got nominated for an Emmy! Exclamation point. I mean, well it's done. by the way, it's. Uh, It's midnight in Florida, so he'll, he'll love that. Because he's, he's, he's been asleep for six hours, so he's probably getting about ready to get up. Leave a voicemail. <laughs> but Leave it's also, a voicemail. It's, it, it's also not going to... What's that? Leave a voicemail. No, yeah! come on, stop it. No. Yeah! No, no, no. no. That's, that's a deal breaker. No, I th I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure 40% of my divorce with McGathy was like my inability to FaceTime. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I, it, it, I, come on. Like, I'm, 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 I'm allowed to be part of society because of the invention of text messaging. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do the phone. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, I sent it, and uh, there you go. It went, it went through. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, it's, it, come on, it's, it's, it, 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 I'm already the obnoxious uh, Hollywood son, like, I don't think, I really don't think, I think it's gonna, I think he's gonna be like, he'll make a joke, he'll say, he'll say like, ah, don't get AIDS from it or something, I don't know. <laughs> now I can capture you... his voice. After yeah. the, now I'm ready, next round when you forget again. Really got his voice now. <laughs> it's AIDS jokes, that's where <laughs> That's the, the rock I needed to overturn. <laughs> when you make jokes around your family, do they still laugh or do they roll their eyes and laugh? I don't think, I don't know if I get, my family, my, my, my family, my mom and dad, like, if they're laughing, like, we're usually, we'll laugh together at something. Like, if, I, you know, something funny happens. Like, I'm not, like, making anybody laugh. Do you point it out, though, first? Or is that in the gene? Point out what? Like, whatever happened. If somebody fell in front of you guys, who's going to fire first? I think it's kind of like my dad. I think my dad's kind of in charge of when everyone starts laughing. Because, <laughs> like, he's not, if, you know, if, like, he's not on board. Everything's going to just, like, sink anyway, you know? Like, yeah. like, 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 you could do all the jokes you wanted, but and then, you know, like, it's funny. It's more fun if my dad's, like, uh, uh, in, in the, the ring mix. Later. Yeah. Do so, you feel like that dude sort of has to bring you on stage a little bit because it's his house? My dad was super funny, too. That's why I asked. I was like, you know, you have the first clown you see is your dad, really. He takes these big risks in front of you, and you're like, all right, let's see. Yeah, uh, yeah. And there's this thing about puberty where you're like, I hope I'm as witty as that individual. Yeah. I want to smack him. With my father, it was fake cursing from Johnny Dangerously. So I'd be at the table, and I'd be like, you Fargan iceberg. Or I'd give him, I'd give him this finger. And he'd be like, you motherfucker. OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Brandon, very funny. <laughs> Yeah, have... I felt like when I hit puberty, like when you said those glands start overacting, like yeah, I, I look back with kind of shame on that. I was like, I was, I was just like bouncing off the walls and like trying to be funny. And I don't think, I don't think my dad was probably very incredibly entertained by it. I think he was like sort of confused, you know, he was, it was, it was like, like bemused. Like he'd be like, what the f all right. But then you killed him because we all know when you, when you're a professional, there is a moment where you've made your family laugh in a way that you didn't before. You know what I mean? Like you use all the shit you've learned sort of to come home and be like, this is fucking funny, you can't debate that. So were you, do you remember the moment when you said something funny to your father and you were like, I got you, old motherfucker. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. I, 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 I used to, when I was a real little kid, I would do like little shows. Like, okay. like, and I would like, because I, like, I just liked the, uh, you know, like everyone, you force people to gather around and you would do, I would do like magic tricks and like Carson bits that I didn't understand. And, and, the, and, and it, was, it was like, yeah, I wanted the attention and I wanted to be funny, but, and yeah, I, it was like, I didn't understand what humor was. Mm. You know, my dad was the funny one. My dad was the one that made everybody laugh. Like he would, uh, like my dad would read, uh, 
uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas. <laughs> and then he'd do, like, commentary on it. <laughs> like, he'd be like, and then the... And then I put his no finger on his nose and uh, he shot up the chimney. I don't know how he got up the goddamn chimney. He's so fat. You know? <laughs> it's something like he'd just make comments. I'm making him sound a little lamer than he is, uh, but it would be like little little comments. Like and then uh, uh, and then and then I remember being like at a certain age, like that puberty age. Like I remember like I want now. I want to do it. I want to yeah. do it. Yeah. Like after my dad just killed, and it was like we could have moved on to have hot cocoa and fucking been a happy family. But I was like, no me, no me. And like eleven, you know, like like a, a fucking adult basically, and like 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 a, as big as a golden retriever, like 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 hard to hit with a whip, you know, like like and and and, uh, and, and then like everybody, and I was like kind of made everybody like no me, and I like went through it and made my own comments like oh boy, how do he get his fat butt up the chimney? And, and I just, I remember distinctly my dad being like, what, he's just, this, my bits, like, like, I remember him, like, I remember him calling it out, and being, being like, you're just doing that, I already did that bit, like, 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 he didn't call it a bit, but he was like, man, I just did that, yeah, it was, a, it was kind of associated comedy with, like, a thing that I wished I could do, I never really saw myself as a, like, other people would be laughing, like, when I went to high school, like, then after a certain point, then people are like, you're so funny, and I'd be like, oh, shit, fuck, Classroom or cafeteria? Playground? What was your stage? Well, starting with just like like two nerds in the back of the room because I was a nerd, so I wasn't gonna make anybody laugh. Like I was like like just right in the back corner in the English class, like mutter under my breath and be like, hmm, oh, this is stupid. Yeah. And then like the kid next to me who was also a like nerd and crammed back there, I'd be like, what? that was funny. And then and then <laughs> And then that kid started a comedy sports team at my high school, and then, and, then, and then I got into like drama and improv and forensics and all that stuff, and got, and got a little more training in like, yeah, just honestly, just, just hit the back wall with your voice and just keep yeah. talking, even if you don't have anything to yeah. say. <laughs> and these kind of exercises, and then, and, then, and then we would do stuff, and then the school would come, and then, and then, you know, then, the, and then strangers like in the school were like, oh, you're funny. Uh, you should be on Saturday Night Live, and I'd be like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're dumb, but uh, it but, is true but, but this feels like it. power to me, so yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, I, that's the that's the story of becoming uh, 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 funny. But never, never, my dad never was like, this guy's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think that might be important, right? Like it's the same with your dad. You're kind of like he was he was like a heckler almost, like or like a unbeatable like. You know, it is, I think, so your dad's side of the family is funny, I take it? Uh, funnier than my mom's side, right. at, at the risk of offending <laughs> a so bunch of very unfunny people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've talked about my great grandma Busha, who's now yeah. who's now passed. I mean, I mean, she was funny in the sense that she uh, was a uh, probably a murderer and uh, and 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 also like had uh, several people attempted to murder her and she survived. That's funny because she was really old, like when she got her throat slashed and she walked to the hospital with a towel wrapped around her neck. I mean, funny like weird. Yeah. <laughs> So, but no, not, not a lot of humorists on that right. side, yeah. So when you met with, when you would hang out with like, do you ever hang out with your uncles on your dad's side? When those guys got around, there is a potential joke circle because he's got the funny gene, right? Am I right about that? Mm. Or were his, were his brothers just like, we don't, we're not funny, he's funny? Well, I think my dad's sister, half-sister, okay. you know, she's very jocular, very funny, like, like very outgoing, like, uh, What's you your know. bit? You got a bit? What's that? Do you know a bit she does? No, I just okay. mean, you know, gregarious, like like just just having fun, you know, like like yes. like at the party, like 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 if something if there's something fun to happen, like, you know, yes anding it and being fun and going yeah. with the flow about the funny stuff and not being like a passive aggressive kind of like threshold guardian about crazy craziness, just yeah. like moving with it and being like that's funny. Like she's not going to turn the room down. She's going to keep it going. Right. Whatever the bit is. I just wonder, because when you, you know, I, to answer your question about your dad, is if he comes from funny people too, it's even more daunting when you're in a family situation to chip at the throne. So like Thanksgivings and Christmases, you're trying to get in there and sort of do your material. Mm. But you also have this dude who is now surrounded by his team. Was that anything, you know? 
No, I think okay. I think I think with my dad, at the risk of talking out of school or whatever, like because I don't really know that much about the family tree as it goes back beyond that. But I I get the impression that my dad and his siblings, like they all have one thing in common. Like some of them are crazier than others. Some of them are, are like more fun than others or whatever, but all of them are kind of like, I think there was a lot of trauma and, 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 and anxiety. And I think they all dealt with it by like really chesting up and like being like either incredibly cynical or incredibly like gregarious. And in either, in any case, like not going gentle into that good night and just being like more kind of like, like, is that all you got? God, like, fuck it. Like, I think that's funny then kind of thing. Like, it was more like, I don't, I don't think there was anybody hilarious uh, uh, over them. I think quite the opposite. I get the impression that, that there was, like, bad people going up that chain and that that's why they're, like, kind of, like, you know, I can take a punch kind of funny. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Heath? What about me, Dan? Heath, who are you in your family? Where do you fall in terms of funny? When did you become filled with toffee? When did... <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan. Never, um, never heard that before? Never, you never. After I don't a have candy an bar? I, have, I don't have an answer about that. Any candy bar <laughs> comments. It's the first time ever to hear that. Are you, you have siblings? Uh, two, older, okay. oh, much. Shit. I'm uh, nine years older than my brother, 11 years, I mean, nine years younger than my brother, 11 years younger than my sister. Uh, definitely the funniest one in the family, can you, can but you that was not saying much. Uh, <laughs> can you fuck them up at will? Like, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. You're the, certainly the funniest one in my family. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I am, I am. Um, right back so in it. My dad's funny, but it's like not, nah, it's sarcasm, okay. like mean, like, um, he, my brother and sister were two years apart, so they would fight a lot. Like, you know, four-year-old and six-year-old or three-year-old and five-year-old fight, like that kind of bullshit. And um, well, they were a Siberian Husky dog. I was yet to be born. And my sister was calling my brother a butthole, and my dad was like, that is not a thing. You don't use that word, don't use that word. And he finally picked up the dog ass end and like lifted its tail up and was like, that's what you're calling your brother. Is that a nice thing? <laughs> that's a real pretty thing, isn't it? <laughs> Um, and that, that, that put an end to all of it. That put all into the butthole. All you needed to do is see a real, real pretty asshole. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, that, that's real pretty, isn't it? That's real pretty, isn't it? It would be like that, kind of. Um, ah. I do have one. Other. Do we have a second? What was the thing about the hose? I remember something about the hose and mud or something no, like no, that. No, no, no. It was dog shit and, and, and throwing it. Oh, so this was the story I was going to. Yeah, okay. So, so now we, ha I'm now born, seven, nine, I don't know, uh, and we have a dog, and uh, I had to clean up his shit was the job that I had to like scoop it, put it in a bucket, and then throw it in the trash, and we had a fence in the backyard, and I figured out like a lot faster to just throw it right over the fence into just a field, it was just a field, it wasn't someone else's yard. So my dad's over in one part of the yard, gardening, and uh, I'm scooping the shit, and I'm like, I'm just chucking it, chucking it. Like, hard white, hard, hard, like, oh, that's white and chalky, gonna fly. Oh, dark, like, fine. And then I get to one that's fresh and not solid and doesn't have the density to clear the fence. And so it just, like, <laughs> across the fence. And I froze. And my dad's, like, on, the, on his knees, like, with a trowel. And I see him freeze. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. That's a work of art. I don't know why. I'm so glad you didn't do it the way I told you to do it. <laughs> that is a god. Honey, honey, get a marker. We got a Picasso and just like fucking <laughs> berated my eight-year-old self with this just blistering. Like it would have hurt less if it were an actual pull a switch kind of thing. <laughs> it was an emotional switch. Um, you guys have any real early memories of straight up eating cat shit out of the cat litter box? 
I swear to God, I remember, I have this like this vaguest memory of, of being like under the stairs playing in what I thought was like another sandbox, sandbox with sandbox. like a brown car. Yep. And like, <laughs> and, 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 my, and, and, and the reason I remember it was like someone, either my brother or somebody coming up like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I'm playing in the sandbox. sandbox. Apparently, I'm like a, smoking it like a cigar. See? <laughs> and, and, and like everyone, like the family meeting, like so, like no, I don't remember like anybody grabbing me and going, "Come on!" And it was just more like everyone get over here and watch. Because it was Danny's probably time to argue about whose fault it was that this happened. You know, like who's supposed to be watching Daniel? Like, he is in the fucking cat shit, eating it. <laughs> That, he, that's not where shit eating came in Pickle Rick, is it? Is that like, was that like a, a memory that found its way? Because isn't that what the psychiatrist, it's family therapy and shit eating? That's oh, not oh, 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 no, I, I mean, I, I, well, is it? I, I don't know. I mean, to get, deep I, yeah, I ate shit How once when I was a kid. I, poop? I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, do you, did you, did you, did you have a cat? <laughs> <laughs> Three. So you definitely, we, oh. we, yeah. Spencer, I'm did sure. you ever eat cat turds? I feel like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like that, like, someone of the kids, like, my parents told stories about that, and I don't know. My, I, I remember being in a bathtub and my brother pissing into my mouth. <laughs> Not really consensually, but uh, please join yeah. us on this very special family episode of Haunted Town. Jesus, Jesus. Was it? Was it? Was it like? Uh, was it? Was, tell us were, were, were you going stop? Don't or was he like? Well, you were so young that he was like, open I was your mouth going and... stop, don't, because I was taking a bath and I did not want the bathtub to be urinated in. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that it might go into my mouth. I just already saw that trouble was a brewing. But uh, yeah, no, he pissed in my mouth, and I just re I, I remember, and I can't not remember, but my parents told me because it's the funniest thing to them. And yeah, it's probably funny. But like, I was like, ah, it's, it's warm, and it's sour, and it's real bitter. Just like, just live commentating the experience. <laughs> like I stopped screaming to, to commentate. I, de I demand a boycott. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> Hashtag pe peeing in my mouth is over party. Uh, uh, was there any sort of payback? Uh, no, I was a good person. <laughs> I, I, I didn't pee in things that, you know, would cause problems for people. It was great. <laughs> I cut the tail off of one of my, uh, like a rubber whale toy that my brother, I uh, turned out to have a lot of affection for. I remember that. <laughs> but I think it's because, and I think I was just a kid, I was just so young that I was just like playing with scissors and was, I didn't understand permanence or anything. Right. I just like cut this rubber thing and yeah. like, and then my, but I remember my brother like, Revealing how valuable that rubber whale was, and I and I remember thinking like, "Fuck you, <laughs> a rubber whale. That's like your thing. Like this is your thing. Spider Man's yeah. your thing, motherfucker." I know because I cut his head off. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to. Yeah, it had to be hard to have a little brother. Like uh, you know. I'm sure it can't be. It's not easy. But you know, like siblings don't have to fight and stuff. I, like Cody's sister, she like she's got she's got two kids and like it's it, yeah. I, I've been I've been re re listening to these books about optimism and happiness and, and how like because like, you know my therapist told me okay so you're happy now maybe so maybe are you gonna drink yourself to death or are you gonna be actually you're gonna have a good life and part of it is like I don't I there's a and I think this is a endemic to our society. Which is kind of a nice thing about us, but it, like that we we don't think we think happiness is like well there's got to be you know we're cynical about it which you know is not to say that oh everyone should be happy, but it's just like we have an attitude about happiness where we're like if it's if you if you if something seems happy then you gotta we it's more real to get to the. Uh, unhappiness underneath it like the, the, the we, we 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 just sort of it's sort of built into us 
to think that tragedy is reality, because it makes sense, life ends in death, and then comedy is fake, happiness is fake. This is a popular opinion now among our, our little Nazi friends. They have this virtue signaling like phrase that they use if you're trying to help, help somebody out or just say a nice thing or, or, or a supportive thing or, or an anti-fascist thing. It's like, oh, you're virtue signaling because the idea is if you're, if you're positive about something, if you're hopeful or optimistic or called to action, then you're, there's, there's a fake reason for it. We even like mythologize our, our, our cultures like artists and pioneers, we, we, we say things like, oh, so-and-so uh, invented the this and that, and, and then their, their biography will come out and it'll say, which means he must have really wanted his father's approval. Like, yeah. like, and all that stuff. We love getting to the bottom of the stuff and making it like more like gritty and dirty and, yeah. and real. Right. Otherwise, we don't believe it's real. And so, and so, you know, you, you sign a deal to do 70 episodes of your favorite show. Like, it's like you, if you've been waiting for a really long time to have job security, there's like a, it's a little bit of an obstacle you hit there where you're like, okay, so I have everything I've ever wanted. Okay, so now I'm, hit, like my, you know, I'm hitting like a vapor lock here. I'm like, well, then what's wrong? Like, and so I'll thought, well, Nazis are taking over America. That helps. Like, like <laughs> seems this, this is fitting. This makes sense to me. Like, God would do this to me. Uh, or and I can always just find a lump in my, you know, wherever. Like, like that, that'll happen. Or, you know, we can't control that. But you just start dwelling on that stuff. You're like, like, I swear every time my agents or lawyers are on the phone now, I used to get excited. And now I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Here yeah. I'm going to find out that I, I hit a baby with with my car or something. Like, I don't know about it. They found it in the bumper. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I had reps that cared that much. <laughs> <laughs> or they're just going to be like, oh, we're going over this contract that we're still working on for Rick and Morty. And did, did, did you know that the guy that you were talking to on the phone the whole time was <laughs> an es escape from an asylum? Like, like just some, some shoe will drop. It was just you know? me. This is all fake. It was just, just hey, did you have Heath in your phone yeah. as uh, Mike cool Lazo? <laughs> Cartoon it's Network? It's going to be a sweet contract. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but there's an... Uh, I'm, I'm reading this book like... I'll be rich. this guy? I don't know if it's I... It's true know. that if I remove the threat, not I... I should, if you remove the threat, people will find another threat because it's part of our wiring. I should give some credit where it's, it's due in case anybody wanted to, you know, it's like a short book. There's this thing called Authentic Happiness. Who's it by this guy? Uh, Seligman? Uh, Martin Seligman? He's like a guy that was like, a, it's like, like, like there, was a, there was a turning point in the psychology industry where I think it was this guy, Seligman, I think, or, or maybe it was some other guy, but who cares? Um, there was some guy that was like sort of like famous for standing up at a big seminar for all of the shrinks in the world. Like they would always have their big organizations. And, he, and, he, and, and this guy got up one year and said, look, we've gotten really good at diagnosing mental illness. We've gotten really good at, uh, we're, we're, we're doing great business. Like the world is crazier than ever. Yeah. Uh, aren't, doesn't that mean we're fucking up? Like, 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 <laughs> like are, are we, have, are, have we all bought into the, Myth that 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 happiness is impossible. Like, are we also fucking miserable? And are we not supposed to be making people happy? We have cured nothing. And, and we've, we're not doing anything. Yeah. Like, if we were real, if, we, if 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 being sad was a broken arm, we would be the worst medical industry in the entire history yeah. of culture. And people are like, boo. You suck, and he's like, "See, that just proves my point." No, I'm kidding. Just, I don't think anything that interesting ever happens in a psych psychology seminar. But, but, uh, but he kind of he, he he made waves, you know. And I'm sure by waves I mean like a bunch of people tenting their fingers and <laughs> pursing their lips and like writing, scribbling marks down, hoping that he'll get insecure. Um, but he was he, he was he was a, he, he he then that sparked this kind of wave of of psychotherapy that was like. Uh, what if our what if our goal was happiness? What if we just experimented with that? And uh, and I think that's where cognitive behavioral therapy comes in and stuff. Like, is this working for you? If not, you know, changing all that crap. Uh, it's interesting. I, it, it already like took some weight off my shoulders. Where they get is there's like 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 the idea of like 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 you know like uh, like happiness is a yeah it's a privilege. It's like a good thing that you have it, but 
Like, if you have more of it than your immediate surroundings, you, it's not necessarily because something unfair is happening. It, it's, you're lucky, sure. but you're not necessarily, it's not necessarily because you're rich, for right. instance, because, and it's, it's just all this science that goes into it. Like, 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 like oh, uh, who's happier, rich people or poor people? And it's like, nah, they're, they're, they, they even out. Right. Who, then there's like these weird uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, differences. Like, as much as I'm sure scientists didn't want this data to come in this way, the truth is, people that have a religion they uh they're they're a little happier they live a little longer i think and they they're a little happier it's data you collect it it's not enough of a difference that we should all run out and join a cult um it, you you there, there's like there's like strange what you'd think is almost arbitrary like things that, and then there's all these other factors that you would assume uh, are, are like oh well that would affect your happiness and it's like no that's that's nothing that's negligible yeah. and then there's it, it, but I just like hearing it broken down to numbers because it demystifies it like I have this religious fear of being happy I, I really think that if I'm over fifty percent happy and I took this I took this online thing I got, my happiness index is three point one two. Uh, On the McDonald's survey. <laughs> <a real> survey. <laughs> <laughs> who was the? What was? Who did this survey? Do you know? It's like something on the site that goes with this book. Okay. It was like they, they kind of. You can go there and you can like you just fill in a couple of questions awesome. and they're they're kind of taking your data because they want like more data from. Uh, but it's like between zero and five, I'm like three point one two. It's it's like all the bar. It's like oh, uh, how much happier are you than people that are your age? It's a fifty percent. People in your income, fifty percent. People your gender, fifty. I'm like right in the middle. Now, okay, is the three? I was going to ask you, is the three on the good leaning side or on the bad leaning side? The, I assume the good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't not think like Star Meter. I don't think what? it's like all. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it, like, it, is, it is fascinating because we're trying to figure out how much of it we should actually have in order to keep going. So I think people study their happiness right. and depression because they really want to relate. How much can I accomplish? Oh, and here's a, here's a really interesting thing about happiness. Like, everybody that you ask, like, do you want to be happy? Obviously, the answer is yes. Only one idiot would say no. But, but everybody that you ask, uh, if I were to give you a magic wand that you could point at your head and make yourself happy, would you, everyone starts arguing. Like everyone's like, well, no, no, not like that. It's really interesting. People don't just wanna be happy. People wanna, people want gratification. They want to earn their happiness. They want to feel accomplishment, which is where the, uh, uh, the, the, the it, it makes all these scientific cases for like anthropologically, like why happiness, which has long since been dismissed as like just a byproduct of emotional thinking, that we need to feel anger and we need to feel fear in order to survive. You need to be like, oh shit, there's a leopard. Oh, you know, like I'm mad right. at you for taking my banana. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and that then happiness is just like, oh, no one's taking my banana right now and there's no lion. But it's like, he's, he makes the case that no, happiness is like the thing. It's like, because it makes you, I can't even, I wouldn't do a good job of selling it, but it's like, you hear it and you go, shit, this could be scientific. You could be like Asperger's about being happy. Like you be, being, being like, 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 like into it. You could, you could, you could, you could, you could, you could turn being happy into Minecraft. You could like try to knock it out, you know, like organize it and like do it right. And, and you wouldn't be cheating. You wouldn't be like, you know, destined to, to have an anvil fall on your head. And, 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 and that, like a mountain climber, like he talks about the difference between pleasure and ha and and, grat and gr uh, gratification. So we're like like a mountain climber is like is 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 happy because they're like they're climbing a mountain, but it's fucking hard. And then like there's a point where they're like gonna fall off the mountain, and they they they're they're not dumb. They wouldn't be like I hope I fall off this mountain. They're like I hope I don't, and I wish I <laughs> I wish I. Was there already? I wish this rope was working better or whatever, you know, like they can have regrets about their situation and wish that it would, and hope that it like goes better. But that's different from being like, I wish I'd never climbed this mountain. I mean, right. they, they knew that climbing a mountain is a bunch of fucking hard work and they chose to like, but they, they were pursuing this like happiness high that they knew would only come if they like, if they did all this shit that was hard. And there's a big difference between like, well, for instance, playing Minecraft, which isn't hard, it's like a comfort thing for me, or like eating a Twinkie, or you know, like just there's nothing wrong with like pleasuring yourself, but you, but pleasure is just like we feel, we feel like it's fake, we, we don't feel gratified by it. 
Your mountain analogy is the same sort of to money, where people work really, really hard to get a ton of money and then get a ton of things, big houses and a lot of grounds, and they're still not happy because it's the difference, right, between gratification and actually being satisfied. Yeah, and there's all this. It's, a, it's an interesting read. I mean, it only t I mean, I got the book on tape and I only listened to it. It's, it was like a couple hours. And at the end, I was like, that's it? Fuck this book. But... <laughs> just, but 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 it's like no. the first half I thought was really interesting and throw a lot of science at you. It might de if it if it if it helps demystify. I think we right. get I think smart people get in a funk about 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 happiness and then we 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 are suspicious of it. There is this thing that we take it for granted the way we take for granted that rich kids don't have a hard time growing up with money. So we just sort of assume that if your parents had money and you have money, you know how to keep it, you know how to make it, you know how to earn it, you know the value of it, but it, it is not true. Right. There should be sort of a course. And there's no question that uh, you know, people who, if you want to be unhappy mm -hmm. and you want to hit all the points that make people scientifically less happy, one of the top things is live in an autocratic third world like uh, country that where where like you have no freedom and like there's there's less nutrition and there's less less like uh, wealth and there's less like and there's more like th those people are made unhappy by that environment. So it's not, it's like poverty does make you unhappy because you're being deprived of fucking shit that an ape would have in the right. wild. I mean, you're being deprived of like, like really like minimum levels of like comfort and emotional comfort. Like, like, do I belong in this family of apes? Like, to, like am I, are these people cool with me? If you're right. sleeping on a sidewalk, you're like more bummed out. Um, so, so, you know, I thought was, there was that documentary. It's like, yeah, it, it tops out like the way the guy says it is like, if you, if you could afford this book, you've, 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 you're past the threshold where money affects your happiness. Yes. Like you're, 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 you're it's, it only works to, a, to like 70 grand a year or something. Uh, anyways, go fuck yourself, everybody. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he talks about how to, how to be happy in uh, relationships and have kids and stuff or whatever. Like, I guess your, ki I guess your kids, you're supposed to, like, just let them do shit and, like, not yell at them and stuff. Like, uh... But and and I would normally not believe it, like the way he talks about kids. But I said, like Cody's sister, like ra like I everything I hear the guy saying, I'm like, oh, that's how your sister, that's how she's raising her kids. That's why they're like. And then the sibling rivalry thing, which we take for granted, we think that siblings are supposed to like resent each other. And but it's not really a, it's not a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pervasive thing, but it's not, it's not a natural thing. It's not necessary. What? What is it? <laughs> what? Oh, man. You don't have to, like, be mad at your brothers and sisters just because they're older or younger than you. Like, that's the, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a thing that just happens, like, because you're what? babies. Well, why does it happen? It happens because there's, there's not a... enough milk. Like, I hate to throw 90% of American families under the bus, but it happens, because, it happens because of a trickle-down of, like, a culture of, like, the parents expect it to happen like go like be nice to your sister like it's just that everything is like oh it's right not based on on they're on, setting norms that it's normal for them to fight like that and they, so they're they taking create share and, and i don't know it just it just I has everything to do with like the just nuances of like are you are you projecting onto your kids like they're gonna pick up from you right like oh i'm like a hockey team and my sister's like a different hockey team like they just you just you you put it onto them on accident because you learned it that way. I always felt like it's because we're close. We're all in the same car, we're all in the same house, we're gonna fight. It's just how it gets Yeah, done. I would have thought so too. I mean, and, and, and you know, it's not like unhappiness is a myth. <laughs> it, right. it's, like, it's not like it doesn't fall out of trees and stuff, but it, like, I, it is comforting to feel like, oh yeah, but happiness is like kinda, it's easier for some people than others, and then like some people have to work for it a little bit more, yeah. but it's like a thing that you could just decide to be kind of. Like that sounds that sounds very naive and privileged. That's that's, that's the tr that's the shame but I will trigger. Say that it's not. It's not because there's this thing that says like you know you can decide when you want to be happy, and people scoff at that because they're like, well, what if you're in a jail cell? What if you're whatever? What if you're an oppressed person? But the truth of the matter is, so much great art and life and joy comes out of slumps. To be honest, so there's, mm -hmm. it's obvious that happiness doesn't know geography. It doesn't know any sort of social class. Because if we can't get access to museums, somebody's going to spray paint something. If we can't get access to instruments, somebody's going to figure out a way to put two turntables together. Like it, oh, people always figure out a way to bring joy, regardless of you know where or, or how bad it truly is. Especially the streets. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are always, you know. <laughs>
There we go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yo, yeah, yo, yeah, 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 yeah. Flying high, flying low. I fucked your mama like a bowl of jello. I fucked her in her. Face. Uh, just, all right. No. Maybe, uh, maybe kick a little something in, in honor of your fake dad. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yo, Yo. this one goes out to Pops, Big Pops. My dad. He feel dad. free to jump in. He feel free to feel jump free in. to jump in with a pop. You can even you can even pass it back and forth on the A and B rhymes. You know I'm, what I'm saying? Oh damn! I'm just curious though. What is it about my rapping that had no limitations on it that made you think what I needed was limitations? <laughs> right. Oh, maybe you should maybe you should draw boundaries around your. Just make sure that you have gotten enough sleep before you rhyme. <laughs> it's yo, 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 yo. Combs, hair, sky, air, eyeballs, nose. I fucked your mama and then I smelled a rose. I put my shoes on tight. I fucked your mama all day and all night. I put my suspenders on and I rolled around and made an angel on the lawn out of clippings that I just mowed. I fucked your mama when it was 10 below. It's cold. I warmed her up. I fucked your mama and then I drank out of a cup. It was my own cum. Straight Rod Stewart. Straight. Burr, 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 burr. I drank my own cum. I love to drink my own cum. <laughs> and now you ask why I, I thought you might have some limitations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that's 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 enough, I think, for now. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Affinity Designer came out for the iPad. Uh, just uh, very excited about that. What's that like? It's like the ongoing drama. The Shrub drama? Shrub drama? Yeah, is there, there's a Shrub iPad drama? No? Oh, I don't know. Shrub got some old ass iPad from Kevin Day, who he's like, like, like and he's try, tried to high road me with it. I could see it was like a legacy <laughs> iPad. <laughs> Shots fired! Yeah, I mean, like. Shrub. Like, and where has Shrub been? Like oh, he just like he like he came and he campaigned and he got a first class ticket to Long Island and like right. fucking just then he just boned out. Yeah. Like he's probably trying to unload Scud T-shirts in <laughs> Boston or something. Like he just it, he you know there was some scam to it. Like where is he? Like that friendship's not real. <laughs> he's always accusing me of being unfeeling and but look how emotional I am. Like, it's always me, he's always putting it on me. He's like, oh, did the big joke, oh, Dan's so mean and he's so unfeeling. But <laughs> if, if, this was all heart, this but whole But if that episode. were true, you wouldn't be the one reaching out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You want me to text Rob that I won an Emmy? Or, go. Yeah. Uh, got nominated? Let him know, let him know. Leave a voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, well, let's bring Steve Levy up. Steve right? Levy! Steve Levy, ladies and gentlemen. Steve wah, wah, wah. Levy. Ba, 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 ba. What's happening? Hey, Steve, what's up with the 20 empty seats? Should we stop doing the show? Uh, no, we should keep doing the show. As the audience dwindles? I think, yeah. <laughs> For this show, yeah, it seems like our number, our numbers. Well, should week. we target like a year though? Because it's, a, it's a sub subscriptions, like because we have to. If we're gonna stop hey. doing the show, we have to. We have to decide like that's a year a, in that's, advance. Yeah, it's, that's on you, I think, right? Yeah. Like let's let's. I just I don't like to be dramatic about stuff, but I also I I can't afford to like like I I don't have the option of just being like following my bliss with the show. Mm -hmm. So we have to decide like. Now wish if we want to like oh let's let's spend this year wrapping things up because okay. then the subscriptions like six months from now we can go okay no more six month subscriptions. Uh, and, uh, all right, well I'll I'll get one more week and then I'll and then I'll make an official like Jeff should be here for Jeff the should be decision. Here. Yeah, I think so. Not that I'm gonna let any I'm not gonna take a vote. <laughs> I'll, 
I'm the one that has to be here every fucking week. Uh, like, 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 every, everybody else is like, oh. <laughs> this place is cutthroat. <laughs> I actually need that, no joke. It's not funny, Dad. Uh, what do you think, Spencer, in terms of the D&D uh, business? What do you think? Uh, whatever you guys want, man. You always say that. Let's do it. Yeah. What, what about you? What do you want? I want to play D&D. Aww. Aww. Let's do it for the people at home. The people at home. Does it make you happy, Spencer? Uh... I don't know if it makes me happy. It certainly makes me feel wanted. <laughs> Looks like we That's need a to big get... part of the biological uh, necessity of happiness or whatever, the drive for it, because it has to do with like, if you're, it's, happiness is like this like Velcro that holds a tribe together, because like, and they, and they immediately, the first thing they did is they were like, oh, our, is, it just, is it just cute people? Are, cute, are people that are attractive just happy because everyone likes them and it has nothing to do with happiness? Like, is there just another factor? And they, they had to eliminate all that stuff in some very uncomfortable experiments, I'm sure. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, would you like to answer some questions about your life? Why? Well, you seem very happy. <laughs> Okay, why am I in a room full of uh, half handsome people? Which Because nah, you're, maybe you're handsome. I don't know. <laughs> why am I sitting on the other side of the room with a lot of ugly people <laughs> who are also happy? <laughs> and why are the beautiful people frowning at us? <laughs> <laughs> ah, happiness. You know about those carrier pigeons? I, I've been listening to this uh, podcast. <laughs> no, no, not so, no. Uh, go on. Not so easy, is it? I've been listening to this podcast, <laughs> Business Wars. You guys know about the business wars? All the time. Nope. There's oh, some, yes. There's some good wars between those businesses. There's uh, Netflix and Blockbuster and Adidas and Nike. Shout and, out to uh, Marvel and DC. Some really, some really fun companies. And, and right now, um, they're doing Hearst uh, versus Pulitzer in the news business back in the day. You're talking about all-time corporate rivalries, like 30 for 30, but corporate. Right. Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a really fun podcast. Anyway, today, they're talking about um, carrier pigeons. Which is because, what, which because, is what the so there versus, versus the gun? <laughs> versus, no, like... Versus I, the cell phone. So, <laughs> Hearst, like, invested heavily in p pigeons that would carry, like, actually carry messages throughout New York City. They would go 90 miles per hour and ah. would know exactly where to go. And there was this big trial that they were trying to get the scoop on before, er, the, uh, before Pulitzer. Where did you come from before this, man? What? Yeah. <laughs> I just found it fascinating. What were you doing backstage that yeah. made you? <laughs> you know, catching up some work, listening to some podcasts. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. You know, the Rothschilds, the Rothschilds also used carrier pigeons. You don't give a shit about what I'm... Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to talk about 1930s New York railroad barons. <laughs> you think I wanted to do this? I'm just trying to put a smile on your face. Yes. So I, to co-sign what you are saying, the reptiles also use carrier pigeons. You are to But they're extinct. How did this they went out of They went into extinct they went out of business. in the 1910s. I don't know. It's you know crazy. what else about optimism and happiness? Oh. Martin Luther King, uh, uh, his branding, optimism, use your I statements. Like I heard that TED talk or the person that talks about the effectiveness of leaders and stuff. Martin Luther King, why, why was his branding so effective? He wasn't the first guy to notice things were bad and all that stuff. He used his I statements and he said, 
I believe, I have a dream. I have, he doesn't, his speech wasn't called, I have a plan. Or, you know, I have, a, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, have a, I have I have 10 <laughs> rules about how everyone should operate. <laughs> it was like, I, I, I have a dream, and his dream was, a, was like two kids holding hands, and if you couldn't get behind that, then you're, a, you know, you're like, all right, you're, you're in the minority. And like, like most people are like, yeah, I, well, when you put it that way, I can access that. It's like a vision. It's a, like, that's what leadership is. You go, I believe, like, first, like, the most important thing it, optimism is the opposite of pessimism. Pessimism is the thing that like infects you and it fucks everything up. Everybody that's mad right now, they're like they're pessimistic, and so some people are moving to try to get behind the thing that they're scared is going to happen. So that because no one wants to be a fool, so they're like, okay, world's falling apart. That's kind of what I've been doing, like hiding. Like I don't want to be a loser in that battle. So like, oh, okay, let me scoot away and over here and stuff. And then like, but optimism is the only thing that's going to actually counter that sickness. But it seems stupid to us. Like optimists seem stupid to us because they're, they're they believe more crazy shit. And they're actually less accurate. They do these studies. Oh, there's this study that was hilarious in the book. So they take people and they put them in a room with a light switch that straight up just works randomly. So, and they go like, hey, turn on the light uh, 20 times or something like that. And then the light switch is like programmed to just be random. So like, like it just, when you turn it on, sometimes it comes on, sometimes not. When you turn it off, if it's on, sometimes it goes off, sometimes it doesn't. The, uh, the, uh, depressed people that they pre-screen for, They're like, oh, you're depressed, come do this experiment. They're like a control group. They, they, they asked them like, hey, what was going on with the light switch, huh? And the depressed people nailed it. They're, they're like, well, it's fucking random is what it was because I turned it on the first time and I was like, what the fuck's going on? And so I tested it and it was right. And they're like clued in, like they yeah. get reality. If you're depressed, like you understand what's sad about the world and what's not working. You're like finely tuned to it. The, the, the happy people, they were like, what's up with that light switch? And they're like, I know, 30% of the time it was just out of control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They don't believe a conspiracy. Yeah, they, they're, yeah. They're, they're, like, they're just like, they, 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 they're delusional. Right. And, and, and so, but there's, there's a difference between that delusion and being delusional about the things that matter, because the thing is, in terms of society, that delusion makes shit happen. Right, and happy it's, people go, that shit happens, and depressed people go, that shit's happening to me. Right, and, and ex yeah, and like, the, if everyone is depressed and everyone is like noticing how the light switch doesn't work, the light, when the light switch is a real light switch, that's incredibly helpful, thank you. You're Vin <laughs> Diesel in Pitch Black, like, thank you. you can see, you can see things that I can't Deep see. Cut. Thank you for saving me from the monsters, but this isn't a real light switch. We're talking about like fucking democracy or you're talking yeah. about like mankind deserving a chance against giraffes or asteroids. Like you actually need, you need that fucking Bill Pullman to get out there and be like, hey everybody, let's fight together the aliens. Like there's no reason to do that. If there's anybody that's sad out there, they're like, this is bullshit. Yeah. I'm flying away yeah. from the aliens because we're all gonna die. That person's correct but not gonna win, all right, whatever. But uh, yeah. You're, you're exactly right. It's kind of why they start with the first images of just straight bullshit. So you kind of knew that this administration was gonna go after women and children first, because that's the most shocking and jarring. It's sort of designed to make you freak the fuck out. So they, they show you the hardest of hard. It's a, it's a little bit of a like precursor to what's about to happen. To wear you down, but don't be, we're not gonna be worn down, right? Well, I'm pretty oh, worn down, but, but. Finally, I'm someone. <laughs> I was at home on my couch when I got this phone call. Hey guys, I it just wanted so to step in now. and say, everybody be aware of guns. <laughs> yes! <laughs> MC Gun Control! Boop, 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 boop. Just a, that's it. <laughs> hmm. I've got, I've got, I'm proud of our audience. They're tired of that bit. <laughs> That was a test. You guys passed. <laughs> uh, Spencer, do you bring us up to speed? Tell us where we're at. What's been going on? Yeah. Hey, Zach, ethos. Uh oh. Last time on Harmon Time. 
our heroes had uh, just put out the fire, and I think then they started another fire. Um, I'm not sure about that. That might not have happened. But they were certainly putting their foot back in it and ended up escaping from the town, but farmers were in hot pursuit. After making it out of the perimeter of the town, they weighed up their options and decided they were outnumbering the farmers and decided to attack. Untrained, the farmers took several blows and were instantly overwhelmed, but they fought valiantly. And uh, then uh, Diarrhea Jr. threw a bunch of vampire dust in the air and everyone started choking. That's what's happening now. All right. Anyone got any questions? <laughs> I hope so. I have no idea what's happening. That's probably, yeah. <laughs> You're playing Shrob's character, Gary uh -huh. Shamblin. You're a big Gary clan man. You're like a swamp thing. Uh, there it is. Great. Got it. In the cut. All right. I wasn't listening to a lot of that. I, hmm. it, 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 I, it. Let's deconstruct why. I used the D&D used the D &D opening to like gather my thoughts about how the show went. I may have called. It's the problem. For, it's like my first chance in two hours to like go, uh, uh, I may have called right. should we keep seven. doing the show or not? Like my, I'm thinking about a million things. I called that makes for it a sense. little too early. I, my apologies. I, uh, it was an awkward handoff, and Spencer picked it up. No, it's not your fault. It. No, it's it's that space of time that's like it's just it's like a snowdrift I have to pee on. Like 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 I, it's like t oh, like, of course, like of course. for no, for, for, for for ninety minutes I'm like uh it's up to me to okay let's keep the show going like you guys can tell how res how responsibly I take this uh, job and then and then and then and then I hand it off to Spencer and then I'm like I'm like I just I just decompress into that space and Spencer's talking about what happened and I'm just going like all right well so get home tonight. Uh, <laughs> like I'll let the dogs out, and like uh, my life's going okay, isn't it? Text your dad. Like, do I enjoy myself here? Are they so like like why? What's, what's with the empty yeah, seats? No, it's, it's, it's your uh, it's your get ready space. Yeah. Like what 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 else can I rhyme with mouth other than south? Like. like Okay, so maybe I heard, like, maybe we started some fires. Well, I like that. That actually made me feel a lot better because that makes just perfect sense. Yeah. It's not, like, about me being bad at this. Oh, God, no. Oh, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, let's get one more No, no. <laughs> that's the worst. I mean, I appreciate the thought, but no. Of course. That's the last thing I want right now. I want to play games with my friends. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Let's yeah. get into it. So we right. So you're outside of the town. You ran away. You were okay. So you you the town was fighting a fire, and you were like, "Well, we still got to find Patchens." So then you went in, and were like, "Where's Patchens?" And they're like, "Well, there's a there's a fire." And then uh, you put out the fire, and uh, then you were asking for Patchens, and they're like, "Weren't you guys the guys that started the fire?" And you were like, "I think uh, the winds are turning." And then you you hightailed it out of there, but then you're being chased, and you were running because you thought you were being chased by an angry mob, but the farther you got, the more it turned out to be just three people, and then you're like, well, fuck this. Yeah. And then you felt bad because you just, like, you slashed one of them in the gut or something. Oh. You, you really started taking them to task, and then it was just kind of sad because it's like, well, they were just trying to do their jobs. Oh. And, that's wh and that's when DJ uh, threw the vampire dust right. in, in, the, in everyone's face. And that didn't do it. That just made everyone cough. Yeah, it was just like, dust, uh, but, you know, you might have diseases now, but... Mm. If anything, it's like an ingredient for maybe an invisibility potion. Yeah, realistically, you did Skyrim. get rid of a magical reagent, yeah. All right. But that's fine. So the, the farmers are all coughing, and one of them's, like, on the floor, bleeding half to death. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, A bear appears. Wait, is Brandon playing both Barney Mac and no, Carl? And, uh, I guess if you Chad. want, you can play both. Uh, what was Jeff's? What's I, his I don't name? Wanna, I don't want to mess up Jeff's. Chad name. the fire. Oh no, like. mess it up! It'll be great. Great, Chad here to, to play. You like fire? Awesome. <laughs> so. Uh, so I uh, I immediately stand up as Chad, look around, and set my hula hoop on fire. You do it. You like it. <laughs> <laughs> to start, yeah, we gotta find Patchens. Mm -hmm. Spencer's what? 
A what? Ask me a question. This uh, is the game. What, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, what, how do we find patches? How do you find patches? Um, okay. <laughs> he's, he's rolling to see just how many months he wants to go by. <laughs> You, you use your intelligence to determine that the best way to find Patchens is to ask if anyone's seen a strange, mysterious child nearby. Ch child? You know, recently. Is he really a child? Well, he's like a, he's like a young... I mean, you'd yeah, call him maybe Patchens? 16 or something, but like by, by these people's standards, yeah, he's like a kid. Oh, wow. I okay. always imagined him as like a 30-something, no, beard, yeah. sleepy kind of guy. For me, at most, he was like 19. Wow. But, yeah. Sorry, I just what? immediately went to dog, having never patches? been here before. So. I can see how that connection yeah, could be made. Yeah, like yeah. A yeah. Dog. Yeah, so his patches is a man. Yeah. Okay. Well, a boy. Well, well a boy. so can I? So we, we, we've. So it's. Not, I'm sorry. I didn't get clarity on like. It's, you said I slashed one of the stomachs of one of these three people that was chasing us. There's yeah. still some. Some two of them like. Yeah, like, but they're coughing. That was like right, the last thing that happened. So I grab one of them. Mm -hmm. And I go, listen to me, or face the wrath of God. All right. You do that. He seems stricken with fear. Have you seen a strange child? He goes, uh, yeah, I think someone was wandering off, off uh, just, just tonight. I think it was right before the fire started. Where? Actually, after the fire started. Sorry. Where? He went towards... Sorry. It's all Sorry. right. You can went. scroll through your memory. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed to be going in the direction of Blade Glen. It's a big, big city, one of the bigger cities around here. Uh -huh. B Blake Glen? Blade, Blade, Blade Glen. Blade Glen. Exactly. Thanks. Thanks for answering my question. And then I turn to the other guy and I go, question. Would you have answered my question? <laughs> Um, if I had focused my aggression on you? He says, yeah, I would have, but you guys got to come back and face justice for doing all the damage. So here's, I do one of these. Here's the thing. I go like, that sounds like a great idea, and I put my foot around behind his ankles, and I push him. I just, just straight up third grade. Okay. <laughs> Just push him. Just into the guts, into the open guts of the guy that you slashed open. He falls into the guts. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I just oh. laugh. I go, <laughs> Jesus. You fucking nerd. Jesus. Oh, God. I'm not facing your justice. I work for the fucking Lord. <laughs> that I'm, happens. I'm Too big to fail, baby. <laughs> I'm ignoring Carlos's bullying and <laughs> focusing on Chad's amazing hula hoop skills with his the fire. Fire hoop. It's just I incredible. Am, He's blowing my mind. I'm oh. juggling rotisserie chickens <laughs> and hula hooping on fire. It's at the delicious. Same time. The fire is terrifying me as a swamp thing. Yes. It's It'll I'm horrified you out. by it. Yeah. I suggest that we move to another town. To Blade Glen. To, to, to Blade Glen. To Blade Glen. <laughs> to Blade Glen. Yes. So I lead the pack, we head out. I am now uh, doing those things, those fire lamps, like this. <laughs> to guide our path. Yeah, to guide a path. Yes. Who knew uh, Chad was a, a fire distance. dancer? Oh, and I tell, I tell the two guys, I go, I go, if you guys tell anybody in town that we went to Blade Glen, your sister will explode. <laughs> <laughs> they look at each other and then look at you and then look at each other. Do they have a sister? You have sisters, right? Both of you do. No, we don't. <laughs> That's right, you don't. Not anymore. Because they exploded in the womb. <laughs> and that's on you. <laughs> Pay it forward. Does anyone, do, do either of you have a loved one whose name starts with D? Uh, I'm hearing a D. <laughs> No, no D. Uh, G, a G, I think I'm hearing. A, <laughs> uh, that's the middle name, the G. That's, a loved one has departed. One of you has a, lo a departed loved one. No, no G. No one has a, loved, a departed loved one. Gregory? Is it Gregory? It, no. <laughs> it doesn't w work if you... <laughs> oh, uh, I was, uh, sorry, I was getting into it. 
Can you really? It's a, I mean, no, it's a cold reading. Uh, I, it's, I, I just realized you need a bigger audience. Sorry, sorry. It's two people. It's a you're, really you're high so chance talented. that they'll I don't have a sister. <laughs> fucked up. All right. Uh, all right. Well, here's the thing. Uh, let's do it the old-fashioned way. You talk about where we went, and we're going to come back and beat you up. You've uh, seen I'm a bully. Yeah. You saw me laugh at you after I tripped you. Mm -hmm. Like, do I, I, I wouldn't, if I were you, I wouldn't give me a chance to be mean. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I love it. Here's, the, okay, let's try, a little, let's try a little bonus here. If you don't tell anybody for the next year, mm -hmm. uh, um, you're going to get a chocolate bar. Oh, oh. I love chocolate. Not. <laughs> I'm going to cut, what's your name? What's your name, sir? Tron. Well, Tron, was your mother 16 when she had you? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, we're laughing at you, but... Uh, <laughs> what, and what's your name, Tron's friend? What's your name? Ron. Okay, Tron and Ron. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this town. <laughs> Tron and Ron, I'm remembering, I'm committing it to memory. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord of the silver light. If Tron and Ron Wait. keep their fucking mouths shut for a year, give them all the chocolate bars. That's a, that's a lock. Why don't you do that prayer for us? I want all the chocolate bars. <laughs> you guys are so lucky. Oh. So long, Tron. Bye, Ron. Bye. Are you going to tell people? No, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> I feel like I believe them. Do you guys? Good we, work. We sense motive on them. Like. <laughs> All right. What's your? What's your? Oh, it might be insider sense motive. It's uh, been a while. Since. Well, I don't really. I don't think I have it as an actual. Then wisdom. Wisdom. If you don't have it. Wisdom is sixteen. Uh, All right. Oh yeah, he's lying. Knowledge. Uh, yeah. Ten. So we are in trouble. They're gonna tell people. Great. But the odds, I mean, nobody's gonna come after He'll us. They'll be gone by then, right? Well, no one's gonna, imagine them going back to town. Oh, they went to Blade Glen. Yeah. No one's gonna be like, oh, then I'll go there too. They, their town's on fire. They, yeah. it's, it's, the only bad publicity is no publicity. Yeah. So it just <laughs> keeps our word about us going, travelers, yeah. reputation. Let's just head to Blade. Dumber Fire. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, that's great. All right. They kind of faked them out. Yeah. Dumber fire. Uh, so now we are on the road. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no. Before you get on the road, it's, it's, uh, it's I guess it's suspicious almost. What is... Um, you get a crow, like from Game of Thrones. What? Like a carrier pigeon? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. It just flies up to us? I thought these yeah. were extinct. <laughs> Can we keep it as a pet? <laughs> uh, uh, you don't have a cage. I think they're supposed to. I think you're supposed to keep them in circulation <laughs> so that they are of use to people. Yeah, that's, that's true. how they went extinct. Okay, well then I take. Uh, I or take, maybe we're supposed to keep one so that we can use it then. Or no, well I guess it. De no, no, that doesn't make any sense. We a, is there a, well, if you want to buy one, that's like buying a cell phone. Right. I rip off a piece of my map and I. And I curl it around its foot. Oh, wait, I want to write a message. To whoever gets this message, mm. I love you. So, Exclamation point from no. diarrhea. Okay. And then I, I tie it around the pigeon's, or the crow's foot. Pigeon. And I go, bye, crow, and send him back off into the world. All right, well, do you get the message from the crow? Yeah, it seems well, like you, a you waste. took it, right? You took Whoa, the message. What? Yeah. You it took the message. It, it wasn't said he like took the offering message. you the opportunity to send a letter. Yeah. <laughs> also, now, what if we read the messages from, and it's yeah. like we intercepted a message uh -huh. from Al-Qaeda, and you just sent them, send like, right back. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, Geraldo'd it. Like, like, I, I feel like I've got a connection with nature as this beast. All right, well, I, I call still... it back. I call it back. <laughs> well, he the got message. the message, didn't you? Did the... you get I the... heard you All right, say yeah, yeah, I pulled the message of course off before I sent it, of course. <laughs> but that's not the important thing to me. I know. So I give but... the message to Chad. Here's the message. It says... Uh, I love oh. you. Oh. It's from... <laughs> no, that's the message he put on the... Yeah, it's, it's the other message. It says... It's from, uh, it's from an old NPC that you guys remember. His name is Brother Absalom. 
Hope this note finds you well. I'm not in a position to reassign you, but as of now, you're being reassigned. Head to the mining town of Fonches, just south of Blade Glen. There's a dispute between the Miners Bureau and the church's district prelate. Call it a hunch, but from what I've been hearing from your work, you're just the man to blast through this log jam and help Fonches get back to mining and help the church get back to purifying. When you can, seek a meeting with Zelly and Fonches. She's in vacation there and will be able to brief you. Burn bright, take flight. Brother okay, Absol but that's written down. Right? So oh, it's, we can reread that? No, so we can just reread that anytime yeah. we want. Right? How oh, big yeah. Is, how big is this bird that it has a scroll like that attached to it? It's a crow. <laughs> Ten foot wood wingspan. It's a crow. They're it's mad. a very small writing. <laughs> it's so you know, I'm not going to read from a crow, man. I'm going to take a pigeon word. <laughs> All right, well, nobody lose that until we get a pen and paper and can write some I'll of it down. I'll hold on to it. Okay. I put it in my pack. Great. It is already written down. <laughs> it's a mess. I know, but I, yeah. thi I think it's best for us to have a little redundancy. Sure, like no, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah we'd photocopy smart. it if we could. Uh, that could be something. So it sounds like... Uh, like we are on we got to choose a path. Do we go to that mining town first, or do we go to Blade Glen to find Patchens? What would we come across first, the direction we're headed? It's just out. It's on the way. It's That's on the way. That was part I, of the letter. Yeah, it's just south of. Okay. And we're south of that. We're very south of. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. We should okay. go to this mining town and see if we can get some gold. Well, it feels like <laughs> gold. <laughs> I think, well, a lot, I heard there's, there another, a gold rush? there's another reason to go to the mining town that's not to mine. People it's, need us? It's, it's, there's a church? civil war happening or something. There's a church involved? There's know. always a church involved. There Let's was a, go to this mining town and steal the gold from the church. All right. Can I, re the can I reread the part about the <laughs> what's happening in the mining town? Yeah, there's a dispute between the Miners Bureau and the church's uh, district prelate. So remember, you came into the first town you came in because there was like, some shit going down at the local church. So it's kind of like the church is in a dispute right. with the, the Miners Bureau. So it's Miners v. Church. Mm -hmm. That's where we're headed. Man, yeah. do you guys remember how crazy that was on a, uh, back in... That was a year ago. I don't. When we no, came it across, wasn't. Oh. It was very recently. It was... Uh, well, <laughs> it's been it like a couple like days. a year ago. <laughs> ID 10 T Fest, you remember? Yeah. It was good times. It was anyway. a year to the to the sadly uh, mistaken gods that believe their lives are more important than ours, and who <laughs> actually just fill time between our adventures yeah. as they control the planets. I'm right there with you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they would probably look upon us as uh, uh, pieces on a chessboard or characters in some uh, poem, and yet I'm sure their life is riddled with fucking confusion and inconsistency and alcoholism. Of uh, but that's why we belong to the Church of the Silver Flame. So we don't have to think about that stuff as much. We have lives of consistency and, and virtue, and we can tell the good guys from the bad guys, like, we're not mistaking each other for our well, fathers. And At least we're working at it. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah. Off to the mining town. For their gold. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> and to help with the dispute. When we get there, I mean, am I moving too fast? I mean, what happens? No, we, no. Okay. Yeah, Spencer tells us. Yeah. So we, we, well, we, we start. I thought you were going to do Jeff's bit. Oh. When we get there, let me do all the talking. Is that what you're going to say? No. Oh, okay. He does. He, yeah. That's a, 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 <laughs> when he had his vocal cord surgery, show. the amount of times that was said per week dropped <laughs> worldwide 20%. <laughs> what were you going to say, though? When we get there, what happened? Okay. So when oh, we, you just wanted to know. Yeah. Oh, man, getting here is going to be a real hassle. <laughs> it's several days' journey, and it might cause monster fights. It doesn't. <laughs> what? You could tell that in one roll? I can uh, for that day, yeah. Oh. So should we leave it that we're on the road currently on the way? You so are, and then you see a mysterious sight, a bunch of uh, cultists doing jumping jacks. What? I love jumping jacks. Come on. We hey, practice this in the town. The cultists. Like, what does that mean? I do, not churchists. I take out my fire sword. What? Whoa. And I kill the leader. What the? What the? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Okay. Whoa. All right. That's, uh, <laughs> we'll see you next week. Uh,
Hit those Ladies deep, and gentlemen, bro. this has been Harmontown. Thank you so much for showing up, for tuning in. Thank you to Chris Boroff, Zach McKeever in the booth. Church, we love you so much. We miss you, Jeff Davis. Our guest tonight, Heath. Last name. Cullen. Heath Cullen. No S. No Heath Cullen. With an S. Oh, with an S tonight. Heath Cullen, ladies and gentlemen. Spencer Crittenden. Steve Levy. Dan Harmon. Tonight. Take chances. Drive quickly. Get any of that? It's a good show.